Cyclone Jungu reaches an impressive peak at sea. The storm that's been on the radar for a few days now formed uh, towards the northwest over the open Indian Ocean and has rapidly intensified in the last couple of days to reach Category 4 status as it moves particularly quickly and even quickening in its pace as it moves towards the southeast, away from any land areas. 140 mile per hour winds right now estimated, which is around 225 kilometers per hour sustained, with an estimated pressure of 939 millibars, moving east-southeast at 29 miles per hour as of 7 p.m. Uh, Mauritius time this February the 18th. Well, the storm is quickly moving on through the open ocean towards the southeast and will eventually reach the Australian area of uh, responsibility, but as of right now it is still in the southwest Indian Ocean with a very large 215 nautical mile wind field in the northeastern quadrant. It's 1685 kilometers from Rodrigues, 1922 from Isle Amsterdam, 2060 from the Cocos Islands, 3572 from Exmouth, Western Australia, and 3801 from Perth. Its movement will eventually take it towards Western Australia, but whether it impacts those regions, remnant low or with any impact at all, remains to be seen. Now, make no mistake, it would be a remnant low by the time it gets there, and so we're mainly concerned about the residual energy from the storm impacting the coast with rip currents and dangerous coastal conditions along with locally strong winds. It's not set in stone that this will happen at all though, and it could drift further towards the south, away from the Australian continent. We do expect that weakening will take place very quickly later on in the week. And here is our expectation over the next few days. You can't really see any land masses here until later on, but it weakens very quickly through Monday and Tuesday, and by Wednesday it starts to get just a little bit closer to Australia there, and it dissipates pretty much before it gets any closer. So uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be a real threat to land, but certainly an impressive storm that we've been watching from above on satellite imagery in the last 24 hours. Well, Mateo France have it even stronger as a matter of fact, 150 miles per hour plus on their last update, with NOAA ADT estimates having a similar va uh, value. JTWC and our latest update going with 140 miles per hour right now, which means a moderate category 4 for this storm that's pretty much centrally located over the South Indian Ocean. JTWC's forecast has the storm weakening uh, to a tropical storm by the time we get to the 20th, that's just two days away, and by the 21st it's down to 50 miles per hour, a very similar track forecast projection to what we were looking at on that uh, forecast that we produced. Now this is the GFS forecast model showing the storm's uh, devolution over time and you can see some of that remnant energy just about scraping the coast of Western Australia and possibly in conjunction with one or two other little systems that are trying to form there off Western Australia later on in the week. Watch that loop again and you'll see all of that that goes on there and uh, the storm's core gets uh, really messed up and gradual movement towards the northeast eventually at the end. Well, let's take a look at some of the other parameters though. This is the reflectivity model, so let's take a look and see if some of that rainfall reaches Australia. Most of it gets sheared off towards the south there, and as a matter of fact, there is very little rainfall that reaches Western Australia there, uh, at least from this particular storm. But again, maybe that second system moving in towards the Exmouth area later on in the week might produce some more rainfall for that area. But certainly from Xiongu, it looks like we're going to see very little impact in terms of rainfall. So let's take a look also at the total accumulations and it'll be no surprise to find that hardly any of the accumulations will be over land to do with this storm. 
but once again a little uh, uh, excuse to point out what's going on further east a potential other system there that will be producing a little bit more rainfall along the coast of Western Australia and that's uh, a few areas that we have actually marked still though only getting to around one inch maximum uh, 25 millimeters from Xiongyu itself it's going to be straight out to sea uh, but Rainfall amounts underneath the storm in the next 24 to 48 hours will still reach around 13 inches, but that is only for shipping interests. Sea surface temperatures are still decent right now, around 27 to 28 degrees Celsius, and they'll be dropping off a cliff fairly soon. Temperatures still decent in the lower latitudes of the South Indian Ocean, as you would expect, it's near peak season. Temperatures still chilly though off the coast of Australia, and just to show you some of those temperatures inland right now, getting up well above 40 degrees Celsius in the piping hot Western Australian furnace that we often see at this time of year. Well let's take a look at the latest satellite imagery and it really is uh, a pretty one to be looking at uh, this cyclone. Um, it's certainly not particularly uncommon to see Category 4s swirling around the open oceans of the South Indian Ocean uh, but this is one such example and when they do happen they are always uh, sights to behold and thankfully this one isn't going on to affect any land areas you might just see on that western fringe of that image there another system that may be forming and might be heading towards the mascarene islands later this week that's something else to look at now but this is a close-up of yongu right now and you can take a look at some of this imagery not this one just yet this is ram but on the next image carousel this here you can find that on the force 13 website force13.com satellite and its movement in the last, uh, the floaters have been struggling to keep up with it because it has been moving very fast southeastwards in that last 12 to 24 hour period. As mentioned, 29 mile per hour movement southeastwards. The eye starting to shrivel up a little bit there, but still looking very decent with very high cloud tops at times, entering the minus 80s, quite commonplace there, especially on the western side and at times on the northern side as well with that big, large band as it continues towards the lower latitude, the higher latitudes. <laughs> 